Here we are in Navan, County Meath. We're going to trace the railway from Navan directly down to Dublin. And before we do, let's just take the 10,000 foot view. Take a look at the railways in general in the area. There used to be four railway lines out of Navan. They used to go out in four directions. They used to go north to King's Court. They used to go west as far as Old Castle. They used to go east to Drogheda. Uh, it actually still goes east to Drogheda, more about that in a moment, and it went south directly to Dublin. So there's still a bit of railway activity on this line. Um, the Navan to Drogheda line is still operational for freight only. It goes as far as Tara Mines, which by all accounts, according to Wiki, is the largest zinc mine in Europe. They mine zinc and lead out of it. And uh, that is the only use of this line today. There's no passenger services on this line. So I would imagine getting passenger services re-established here would be one of the easier uh, ways of getting railway travel reopened for passengers. Um, you know, the tracks are still in place. Signals may need to be upgraded or so on. But uh, yeah, the, the line is still operational for freight anyway. But uh, the line south to Dublin is, has been lifted. That was lifted quite some time ago. But that, has, that line has been partly reopened as far north as a station here called M3 Parkway. And as you can see, it's got a long way to go and to reach Navan. There are plans to complete the job, but it uh, doesn't seem to be making much progress of late. So let's take a look from the ground. Navan station here is in the background. Uh, these level crossing gates, I believe these are, I don't see much sign of automation here, I believe these are operated by the train crews as the train passes through. I think a train goes through once a day. So uh, it's, look at the condition of the tracks are in pretty good shape. You can tell it's still operational. So the, so the, frequent, the service isn't frequent enough to justify automation, I suppose, but uh, at least the line is still working anyway. And this building, we've seen this building before. This is the, this would have been the station keeper's house. We know that because we've seen the exact same style elsewhere in the Great Northern Railway. There it is in Castlewell in the exact same building, just different colored bricks. So always interesting to see this building popping up all over the place in different locations. From the street view, we can't get a really good view of uh, Navin Station. There's the yellow brick building, part mostly disused now, I think. Uh, this yard is used by bus error, and I don't know if it's used as a bus station, or it doesn't look like it's used as a station, more of a depot. And there's the goods shed, still in pretty good shape, by the looks of it. Um, would be good to see that building being put back to productive use. If it can't be used as a bus station or a train station, it would be good to see some sort of business in there, keeping, in, keeping it in good shape. There used to be a handful of stations in Navan. There was two stations actually, Navan and Navan Junction. So that's Navan that we just looked at. Navan Junction was further up the tracks here, where the where the lines split. There's where the lines split. That's where we went south to Dublin. Tara Mines. We'll just take a look at it while we're here. There it is, Tara Mines. So that's where all the zinc and uh, lead ore is loaded onto the trains. These tracks here I think have been lifted west of Tara Mines. Yeah, well, look at that crossing keeper's cottage. But uh, it's been a while since a train passed through here. Look at that. The car dealership on top of the tracks. Ridiculous. Okay. Let's go back to uh, Navan Junction then. So Navan Junction Station was about here. There's not a whole lot left of it except I think for this, uh, for the goods shed. There's the old goods shed. Still operational, there's still businesses using it. Seen better days though. And I believe the trains came through somewhere roughly around here where the Sally Way is. <clears throat> or maybe on the other side of that wall. But yeah, there's Good shed, still in pretty good condition. So let's, yeah, let's start going south. Oh, before we go south, let me look at uh, Kieran Cooney's website here. This excellent website, Air Trains. 
I've got some good information here about Navin Station, some nice photos, and also Navin Junction Station. And there's a bit more information there about where it was and what's left of it and so on and so forth. So I'll give you links to that in the description. Good on you, Karen. These are great photos he gives for things that you can't really see from the street view. So this is where the trains would have crossed over the road, probably roughly where that gate is. And if we're going to get the line reopened, it's probably going to take a similar route. And the railway crossed over here as well. I don't know if there's much trace of it. Crossed over about here somewhere. Unless I'm mistaken. And we go out into the country, we see rows of heads is still tracing the outline. So this is interesting here, if we're, if we're going to get the line reopened, it's going to be nearly exactly where it was before. If it, would, it would be very close to the back gardens of these homes here. So the people that live here might have something to say about that. I'm sure we could mitigate it. You know, put the train into a, put a sound wall up. They do that in, here in California. They build sound walls beside freeways. Freeways are a lot more noisy than railways. Uh, but it's a good way of mitigating the noise. Yeah, let's keep going south. See more houses built close to, but mercifully not exactly on top of the tracks. Then the this connector road to the is this a connector to the M3 R147. The M3 motorway runs parallel to this uh, this railway, so this would have been built on top of. The old railway. So the trains would have come through roughly at this location here. Are we looking at another crossing keeper's cottage here? It's possible. A lot of chimneys on this house. That's a sign of an old building. A lot of chimneys. It is before oil central heating. We've got a couple of stations worth looking at here too. Let's, let's keep an eye out for Bective Station is the next stop. I'll keep an eye out for that. Forgive me if I'm not pronouncing it properly. I think the line went through the, the middle of these back gardens here. You know, if we're going to get the line reopened, maybe we could take a detour around these houses, leave the people alone. It looks like these houses were built on top of or very close to the tracks. And this piece of road was built on top of it too. I'm actually losing it slightly here. Where was the railway? This might be it. Yeah. And I believe that's our first station there. Is that Bective Station? I believe that's it. Yeah, there it is. Strange name as well. Where does that name come from, Bective? This is not like any name I've heard before. Kieran Cooney's website has some great photos of it, though. Located on the former Clonsilla to Navan Line, built by the Dublin Mead Railway, 1863. Seems to be a private residence now. But look at that, you can pretty much tell where the platforms were. So the trains would sort have of gone underneath that road, underneath here. And I wonder if this bridge is still intact. I wonder if you can still walk underneath it. There you go. Okay, what's our next station? Kilmessen Junction. Let's keep following our hedges. There's a bridge there over the Boyne. I'd be interested in seeing what condition that's in. From the satellite photo, it looks like it's in good shape. Looks like it's still traversable, but not used by many people. Okay, so where did the trains come through here? About here, roughly. So is there any trace of it? Mm, no, nope, not much left of it there either, is there? Now, oftentimes the line would have gone through a tunnel. It's kind of hard to tell from the satellite view what is the case there. Kilmessen okay, Junction Station, somewhere around here as well. Is it? What road is this? Town Road. Okay, we'll keep an eye for that Ennis Town Road then. I 
think that's our railway there. There it is, Amstown Road. <clears throat> okay, what station is this? Kilmesson Junction, okay. So it's in here somewhere. Oh yeah, this is an interesting one. This is actually a hotel now, isn't it? So the trains, I think, passed underneath the road about here somewhere. There's your bridge, and the station is in behind. Can't really see it from the road, but again, Air Trains website. Thank you, Kieran. Got some great photos of it and more information. So the platforms and everything still intact. Station House Hotel, the building still in use. It's a really good use of the building. Stick out the beautiful signal cabin. In fantastic condition. And lots of railway paraphernalia are still about. And there's the good shed. Now used as a reception hall for the hotel guests. <laughs> so even the old turntable part of it still survives. That's fantastic. And there's the bridge. You can still get underneath it. It says this area is now... Oh. This area is now a landscape garden. So, yeah, people taking good care of that. Uh, taking good care of that station. I'm delighted to see that. There's another building further up the road here as well, which I'm curious about. I, first time I looked at this, I thought this was part of the railway. Is this a, was this a hotel back in its day? Quite old looking. Look at the shape of the windows and the number of chimneys. This is an old building and it's aligned with the railway, it's not aligned with the road. So let me know if you know what this was. It looks kind of grand for a station keeper's house. Okay, so that's Kilmesson Junction. There's another line that went out here to Athboy. <clears throat> We're not going to look at that today because you can't look at everything. Okay, what's our next station? It's a long way to the next station. Drumree. Okay. Let's press on. Some houses built here. Either on top of or very close to the line. Uh, I think we can even see the bridge. Yeah, there's their bridge. There's where the trains passed underneath. And there's houses built directly in line with where the trains used to go. So we may have to do a fresh bridge over here if we want to go around these houses to get the line reopened. But disappointing to see that sort of thing. Right? Building houses on top of old railways drives me nuts. There's the bridge, still in good condition. I see a lot of these circular things in the field, so I'm curious about what they are. If you know what they are, please let me know. Is it something to do with exercising horses or something? Perfect circles. I see them on the landscape in a few places. We've got ourselves a crossing point here. Silver Stream. We're going through some fairly open country here. Not a whole lot of development. So it's a bit dispiriting when you see the one bit of development you do see is right on top of the railway. There's a bridge, looks like it's still intact. Looks like you could still get underneath that one. There's another crossing point. Uh, looks like you can get underneath this bridge too. Tantalizing to see how feasible it would be to get these lines reopened. Did we miss our station line for that? Drumree. We're not there yet. And I believe Drumree station is about here, isn't it? Okay, where is our station, John Marie? I don't know. I don't think this is visible from the road, but again, Karen Cooney's website has the photos that you're looking for. So I'll give you a link to that in the description. But uh, yeah, the line went through roughly about here. So the station must have been in here somewhere. And it's hidden behind some of this stuff here. It's in there somewhere, just can't see it from the road. Then the 
And there's a building there that looks similar to the one we looked at at the previous station, that Kilnesson Junction. It's not a post office. Looks like an historic building. Okay, so that's Drum Reese Station, and what's next? Batters Town. Oops. Batters Town, the next station. All right, let's keep following our hedges through the fields. There's another road built on top of, slapped across the route of the old tracks. So I'll have to put a tunnel in underneath here. Let me get the land reopened. Pretty clear though, isn't it? I can almost picture the trains going through there, shuffling their steam engines. Well, look at how clear those twin lines of hedges are in the field. There's a bridge still intact. Looks like you could walk underneath that one still. Looks like farmers frequently do to get to their fields. There's another one of those circular features, which I'm curious about. Someone's built a house here. Oh no, this is Batterstown Station, isn't it? Yeah, I believe this is Batterstown Station. There it is. Uh, the bridge still seems to be intact. Looks like the house was extended on top of the one of the platforms here, the, uh, the up platform. The down platform is still visible. Karen Cooney's, yes, yeah, Batters Town, there it is. Karen Cooney was able to get as good a photo as you could get from the road. So there's a good bit of information there. I'll let you read that in your own time. Very cool. Nice to see. Uh, nice to see the platform's still intact, isn't it? Not sure how you deal with this uh, in the event of getting the line reopened. Would you just do a compulsory purchase? Or do you go around it? Bit of a dilemma. That looks like a crossing keeper's cottage here. I don't see any evidence of grid separation. So the trains must have come through here. Down that lane. Okay, any more stations? Powder's Town. <coughs> Ferry House. I don't think there's any pictures of Ferry House Station. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot left of it. Farm buildings there. And I think the line almost disappears here for a part. It goes on the other side of the, the M3 and then comes back onto this side of the M3 again. So obviously when we're re reopening the railway we might just cut that corner. Save ourselves the trouble. Um, we'll take a look here on this road. See as, uh, if we can see anything of the railway from the slip road. There's the toll booth. We'll talk about the toll booth in a minute. Uh, the trains came through roughly about here. Uh, it's very hard to see any trace of it actually at this point from that view. I'm sure if it was there physically, I would uh, get a better view of it. So, Ferry House Station, I think, was pretty close to. I think it was about here actually at the end of this lane. So, this lane here probably was. Uh, a road that led to Ferry House Station. That would have that road would have continued up here. That appears to be a dead end now. So we've got two dead end roads either side of the motorway, where there used to be a contiguous road. So Ferry House Station would have been about here somewhere. And as you can see there, the this photo was taken in 2009 during the construction of the motorway. And when I see big construction projects like that working through the country, I wonder. Why do they have so much money for motorways, but getting a railway reopened is just a big, impossible ask. Drives me insane. There's another example of roads that were cut off by the motorway. Yeah, that would have been a contiguous road through here, but not, not anymore. So it's a little, it's become a cul-de-sac. Some more construction. They must have worked their way north, built the motorway north towards Navan. I suppose that makes sense. And then we come down to the, this is where the railway has been restored. This is now a live active railway at this station here, M3 Parkway. So that's the Navan M3 Parkway line. 
So I'm not sure what the current status is with finishing the job and getting it all the way into Navin, but uh, yeah, there's your station. In the middle of nowhere, frankly. Just a massive parking lagoon. Sort of a barren, desolate place, in my opinion. Not the, it's not exactly a destination, is it? This is somewhere you get out of as quickly as possible. Not a very good experience here either, in my opinion. You get out of your car, you walk through acres of parking, you walk across this busy road to get to your station. Well, at least the bicycle parking is generous. I just hope the roads are nice and safe to ride on. Here's what I would do if I was here in Rod Aaron. Instead of building acre upon acre of surface parking, the ground here is prime real estate because from this spot you can get a comfortable commute into Dublin. So this ground, rather than being developed as parking, should be developed as residential commercial space. Build a small village here. By all means keep a bit of parking, but it should be multi-storey. Takes up a smaller land footprint. In the remaining land you can develop more productively. Let the people park here on this side and let them walk to the station past the shops and cafes that you want to build here. That's what I would do. I mean the apartments that you could sell here, you know, rent them out. You could make a fortune from it. That's how they, they do it in Hong Kong. So the Hong Kong Transport Agency funds its business. And if this was in Hong Kong, there'd be a giant apartment building right on top of the station. So people could walk, get in the <clears throat> get in the lift, go down, pick up your train, straight into Dublin. But that would be too sensible. I mean the money that the Hong Kong Transit Agency makes from that. It's one of the few public transport agencies in the world that turns a profit. Funds its operation, they, they build, you know, they, they buy derelict or underutilized ground, run a railway line to it, build a train station, build apartments and office space on top of the station, retail space, and they rent it out at the full market rate to the highest bidder. And they make a so much money from it that they use that money to reinvest in their system, to expand their network, to build more railways, to build more stations, to build more apartments and commercial space, to generate more income and expand their network. So there's a gold mine that Ironrod Aaron is sitting on here on this land. They don't even know it. The other problem I have with this is it's south of the toll booth. I know the toll booth was probably put in first, and I understand the, the reason why, because if you put the toll booth, uh, if you put the toll booth south of this junction, then people would start using the back roads. Well, actually, yeah, the toll booth south of this junction would make more sense, wouldn't it? Because then people would have the choice of taking switching to the train or continuing to drive and pay more for the driving. So you'd have to choose between paying the toll and paying the train fare. Whereas, as things stand at the minute, you have to pay the toll and then decide if you want to pay the train fare. And with the sunk cost fallacy that people think of, they think, well, I've already paid the toll, I might as well get my money's worth and drive all the way into Dublin. So it's a disincentive, really, for people to take the train. So if the toll booth were to be moved south of here, that would fix that problem. That would encourage more people to take the train and would take more cars off the road. But the ideal solution, in my opinion, would be to just finish the job and get this railway opened all the way up into Navin. So then people wouldn't even be driving this far. So that would take the maximum number of cars off the road. So I do hope they get that line reopened all the way up to Navin. It's a missed opportunity. It's a gold mine. M3 Parkway, you could develop that into something a bit more lucrative than just a car park. That's what I would do anyway. So good luck to the lobbyists and the people campaigning to get that line reopened. We'll be following it with great interest.